Welcome back, and I've got a fun and unusual experiment for you today, and this is one you can try yourselves at home. But first, a bit of a story. When I was at school, we used to annoy the teachers, and, uh, well, by doing lots of different things, but um, one of the things we used to do was we used to take a biro uh, and pull the centre out of it, and also pick the end out as well, and that would leave us with a clear plastic tube. Um, I found out it's rather more difficult to do these days because they seem to have glued in that little bit, probably because uh, children were swallowing them. Anyway, so here's a biro, and we'll unscrew the end, uh, take the centre out, and we're left with a plastic tube. And it's what we did with these that was very annoying. So if any of you have done this, um, you'll know what you do is you blow over the end. It's not a very exciting noise, but you get a sort of whistling sound. Um, some biros do it better than others. But um, there's something really strange that happens when you put your finger on the other end. And it's going to take a little bit of explaining. So you've got your biro tube and you blow over the end. But I wonder how many annoying school children have tried this experiment and been able to explain it. So you blow over the end and then you put your finger on this end. I'm not sure if you can hear that with the microphone where it is, but you'll hear that the note completely changes when you stick your finger on the other end of the tube. So let's do that again. Very strange effect. You'll notice that when you blow on it, when it's open at this end and that end, you get a note. And the note gets lower. When you put your finger on this end, so you have one open end and one closed end. And that's going to take a bit of explaining. So let's try and explain this. So with our biro, what we've got is a sort of whistle, and not a particularly good one, but it's a whistle nonetheless. And it's open at this end and open at that end. And when we blow on this end, we get the higher of the two notes. And when we block this end, we get the lower of the two notes. So the way to look at this is to imagine this end being open and this end being open. And the air inside here can wiggle around a lot at the open ends. Inside, it can't move very well at all. It's trapped. So, using my hands to show you this, imagine a maximum vibration at the open end going down to almost none in the middle and then going back up to a maximum vibration at this end. Now, if you look at that, you've got half a peak and another half a peak. So, what fits on here is exactly half a wavelength. And that is half a wavelength of the sound note that's being made in this tube. So let's now try and explain why the note gets lower when we block this end. So let's explain the lower note. So here's the high one. There's the low one. Now I've blocked this end. So if I block this end, the air cannot move very well at that end. It can only move really freely at this end. So it's moving maximally at this end and minimally at this end. So if you look at that, it's kind of half of a peak. So that represents half of a peak, then you've got the rest of the other half, and then a whole nother peak, so it's only a quarter of a wave. So where we had half a wavelength fitting, with this, when we've got a blocked end, we've only got a quarter of a wavelength fitting. And if we've got a quarter of a wavelength, we've got half the frequency. So the blocked one has to give a lower note of half the frequency. So quickly to summarise that bit, if it's open, we get half a wave fitting. This must be half a wavelength long. If we close it and we only get a quarter of a wave fitting, then this must only be a quarter of a wavelength long. So the actual wave being produced must be much longer. In other words, a lower frequency. So I'm going to stop messing around with bits of biro because this really has an application and show you an organ pipe. This is a little small organ pipe, um, like the ones you see in church organs. You've probably seen the much, much bigger ones that play lower notes. And um, this is a little bit more complicated, but you'll get the idea. So if I blow in this, high note, and I block it, 
low note. So it's a very similar thing. There's the high note, and there's the low note. So what's the application? Well, the application is this, that as we get to lower and lower and lower notes, the organ pipes get longer and longer and longer. So here's a different organ pipe. That's a lower note than that one. But what happens if you want to play really, really low notes on an organ? You're going to have to make these pipes really, really long, and they're not going to fit in the building. Well, you've got a couple of options. One of them, of course, is to bend them through 90 degrees, which is not a particularly good one. But the other one, like we showed with a bit of biro, is dead easy. Take the organ pipe and block the top end. And if you block the top end, you'll lower the note it can play for the length that it is. So you'll see here a picture of some church organ pipes. And you'll notice the ones we call woods, because they're made out of wood, come in two varieties. Those that are open at the end, and those that should be really, really long, but they wouldn't be able to fit them in the building easily, to play very low notes. So you can see the plug at the top. It's usually got a handle on it, a bit that's wood that sticks out, so they can tune it, vary the length slightly. But the top of that wooden pipe is blocked, so you know it's going to play a much lower note than the one it would when it was open. So, don't annoy your teachers too much. I hope you learnt a little bit there about waves forming in pipes. I'll be making another video soon, and I look forward to seeing you then.